Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Euro Nurse. We meet every Saturday at 9 a.m. Central Time. If you're watching us on YouTube or on Facebook or LinkedIn, welcome to the show. Hey, do me a favor. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. We're trying to build up that subscription base. And if you're watching us for the very first time, be sure to check out our website at Euronurse.com. You learn more about the program there. It's also the best place to go to check out our past episodes. And boy, oh boy, we got 46 of them to check out. Now, if you want to communicate with us, comment box. Go ahead and just put your comments in your comment box. No matter how you're watching us, they'll get sent over here. and We'll be able to show those on the program and answer your questions, which is the most important part. So this week, we got a great uh, segue from our past uh, episode where we talked about how to give a virtual presentation. I'm going to talk this week about how to create that presentation. Put those two together and boy, you got a panelist talk. So speaking of that, let's go ahead and bring in our guest here, our experts. And hey, welcome everybody. Hello. Hello. Lori, how are you doing? Good. Glad Good. to be back. All right. I see a couple of comments coming up here. We've got some uh, LinkedIn comment. Thanks from LinkedIn. And John, hi, what's new this morning? Neil says, good morning. Bring in all our comments here. Um, hey, thanks. Thanks for all those good comments, folks. And uh, let's see here. This is the time that we're going to go into our favorite stories and our introductions. We'll put those all together. I'll kick it off, though, with uh, my favorite story. And that's last week's episode. Uh, for those of you that have watched it, great. I appreciate it. Now, normally, Euronurse has been doing really good. We're, we're really happy with how many people are taking advantage of watching it live and mostly on demand. We know we see a lot of people that watch it later. Typical episode, one to 200 views in a week. Last week's episode, we've hit 1,600 views. It's an all-time record view for any of our uh, talks. I also noticed my subscribers went up because on YouTube, this is. Um, so the subscribers went up from, uh, fit by 51 more subscribers just in one week. So it's great. Add up to our subscribers and it'll help us in the program. So my favorite story was that. So, uh, and for those of you that are new to this show, may not know who I am. I am the, the producer and host of the show, been involved in urology for the last four decades and really enjoy bringing this forward to, to you guys with, uh, our great presentations. And hey, let's bring John in next to talk about uh, a favorite story and introduce himself. Go ahead, Hello, John. Hello, everyone. Hi, I'm a private practice urologist in Gilbert, Arizona, who is paying it forward by sharing my experiences both in the clinical realm of urology as well as in the business of medicine to benefit everyone. One of the ways that I'm doing so is by creating the Thriving Urology Practice Facebook group where over 2,300 U.S.-based urology practice folks collaborate to improve our practices, and it's all for free. And when they say, if it's free, I'll take three. And the story that I'm going to share today is something that is very personal. Back, back in when I was in my mid-30s, mid to late 30s, I was going through my one of my urology rotations at St. John's Mercy Medical Center that's in the suburb of St. Louis. I was rotating through a kind of a, a rural private practice type of a setting. My attending, Dr. Cheval, and I were operating one morning, beautiful morning, at uh, St. John's Mercy Medical Center. And we were working on the male bits down by the foot of the bed and up at the anesthesia table was the anesthesiologist and someone new i'd never seen her before so she started talking of course you're concentrating on what you're doing but then you can't help but overhear what she was talking about and which was her black door bonnie so of course i piped up because i have a dog i had a dog named max yellow labrador so she had a black lab i had a yellow lab after i finished the case happened to run into her in the hallway and i said to her hey what's your name and she said my name is lindsay and I said i'm john 
I said, hey, would you like to see a website of my dog? And of course, she's a dog lover. She has a black lab and I had a, had a uh, yellow lab. So I went over to the computer in the lounge and I showed her my dog's website. Now, back in... <laughs> Back in the 1900s, 1990s, the, the late 1990s, 2000s, I had to code the website by hand, HTML. So it was very crude, but it had a bunch of pictures of Macs on it. And I said to her at that time, we should go walk our dogs sometime. So that was my pickup line. That was the line <laughs> that, I, that, I, that I used to meet my wife. Wow. I've been married for almost 20 years. So the reason I'm telling you the story is I, I wouldn't have been able to say that to, to a girl if I hadn't had the courage and the, 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 the way I got the courage to ask her to, to deliver that line was because I've had a lot of practice. Over the years, I realized that you can't just do it once and then be good at something. You have to practice delivering the lines, asking somebody out, asking for somebody's phone number. And if I hadn't practiced, if I hadn't gotten the courage, I would not be where I am today. I would not be so successful, be so happy, and I wouldn't have the opportunity to be in front of you right now. So the moral of the story is take the opportunity, take the chance, when Vic is encouraging you to join us as one of the panelists, take that opportunity. This is a very low risk, easy thing to do. If you look at the video from last week, we show you how we all are coming up on, on the air online in front of you right now. You don't need anything fancy. All it takes is you getting on, you getting the practice to deliver these lines and to, to, to show what you know, and then you never know what doors are open and what opportunities lie ahead of you. Back yeah. to you, Vic. That, that's a good point. Uh, and, and he's right. You know, you just never know what's going to happen. You know, you start something crazy like this and all of a sudden it takes off. So it's really great. And all the folks that I've met online, you know, that I've never would have probably met in my life before. It's, it's been an interesting experience. Hey, Lori, let's bring you on here. It's been a little while since we saw you. Why don't you go ahead yeah. and introduce yourself to the crowd? So my name is Lori Atkinson. Sorry, there's still a delay, Vic. I don't know what happened. But um, anyway, I am Lori Atkinson. I am a certified urology registered nurse. I've been in urology for 25 years. I currently work for Northwestern at Geneva and Winfield. Um, I actually have a kind of a funny story yesterday, and everybody can appreciate that if, if this if you're in urology. So yesterday, I decided to buy my staff pizza because we've been working extra hard and so forth. And I like to, you know, just give them a little bit of oomph um, to keep them going. So while I was ordering the pizza, my office is next to the nurse's station. And so I was ordering the pizza and I just hear the, the staff start laughing. And I'm like, what is going on? She goes, you, or they, they said, you just ordered an 18 inch sausage. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a good in chuckle out of that. They, would they get and, a kick out of that? Yeah. <laughs> only <laughs> urology. Well, it's great to have you back and glad to have you on part of our panelists here. Um, so great. I'm going to see we have a couple of comments coming in or questions. Let me see here. We have Bharat, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. Good morning to you all. Good morning. And last week's presentation, well, John was lucky or nice enough to share the link if you missed it. Otherwise, you can go to our website. It's on there. And too funny, Laurie. <laughs> I guess they're get glad to have you back. Yeah. All right. So we're ready to go get on with our show and talk about practice. I'm going to be using two computers to try to do this. We're going to make this a live presentation. So this is going to be interesting. Bear with me, folks. We'll see how it goes. So we are going to be talking today about uh, how to create a presentation. And for those that, whoops, already hit the wrong button. For those of you that are watching this on demand later on, 
um, and you haven't watched the episode 32 on artificial intelligence, do go to euronurse.com and check that out because I'm not going to talk about how to use the, the programs. This, this episode, I talked about that. I'm going to actually show you what you can do once you know how to use these programs to let them do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. So now whenever you're building a, a web, uh, a presentation, you have to use some kind of a slide type presentation software. PowerPoint's been around a really long time and it's a great one to use. I use Keynote. That's the one I prefer. And Google Slides is out there. I've never used it, but they all can kind of do a lot of the same things. I don't know that there's a disadvantage to picking one or the other, except whatever one you use, stick with it because it's going to be the easiest one to work with because you're used to it. And that's how I uh, build. So I am going to be using Keynote today. So for those of you that haven't seen it, you'll get to see how it works. But uh, it's just so much easier for me to, or so much faster for me to do it than going to PowerPoint and trying to relearn another system. But a lot of things I do, you can do on both of them. So don't worry about that. Now, first thing I want to mention is there is a difference whether you're going to give a presentation like this where we're talking online on a video monitor versus being at a conference like we see on the right side um, where you're going to be in a room projecting your images up on a screen. And one of the key things is, is your choice of background and lettering. So if we're doing an online presentation, I always say that you want to try to have a dark background and white letters because it's a lot easier on your eyes. You'll see what I mean when I show you the opposites. You're doing a live presentation. You want a light background, black letters. It's the contrast. It makes it easier to read anything that you have on the screen. Now, as those of you that are watching this right now, that white is probably bothering your eyes a lot more than that black does. And that's why I like to choose a darker color um, for online presentations. It's easier on the eyes. But I have tried this because I think I think it looks cool. And I've done a live presentation with black with white letters. It's hard to read on a screen. So avoid that. This is your best bet. The other thing to avoid, a lot of times we've been on these kind of presentations where they've got a bunch of words up there, a bunch of bullet points, and you're just ready to dig out your phone and start checking your, your texts and emails because it's hard to read, number one. And even if you do something like try to break it into two columns and make the lettering bigger so you can read it, it's still boring. You can read these faster than I can say them. And most of us scan through stuff and kind of get the general ideas and then we tune out. And it's not the way you want to do it. If you're going to use any kind of words, minimize it. Just small little bit of uh, words are going to be a better impact. So I'm talking about the impact of artificial intelligence on, intelligence on various industries. Just have the title up there. You do the talking. Don't put all that material. That's like John said, practice. You need to practice, memorize your script so that you can talk about it. Now, the best thing you can do is add an image to your presentation. Images evoke emotions, and that's what you're going for is to try to get an emotional response. So you can see that from this, we have this title up here. We look at this guy's face, and what do you think about artificial intelligence right now? Is it something that you're going to be happy? Think it's going to be a story I'm going to tell a happy story about, or is it something that you're going to be worried about or confused about, or who knows? But you're starting to get some ideas from the image. Now, the other thing I'm going to ask you to do right now is try to say the title in your head, if you want, you know, say it out loud, that I just gave you what the title of that program was. I'll bet you can't do it. I'll bet you can't get it all the words in there. But if you want to try to tell me what that image was, what was that guy, I'm sure you could describe him to a T. 20-something-year-old, brown, shaggy hair, big eyes, worried look on his face. You see, we remember images much better than we do words. Now, just for those of you that want to see what the, the, the sentence was, whether they got it right or not, there it is. And your description, I'll bet you get that one right. So we're going to remember images a lot better. That's the key. So work with images. It's going to make your presentation flow a lot better. People will start to, in their head, build up what you're saying, and that helps to cement the memory. Already, we know this looks like a patient coming to see a doctor for a problem. Now, if you want to add a little pizzazz, you can use animations. And here's an animation. It has a little pop. It kind of brings maybe a chuckle. And we now know that he's coming in with Peroni's disease because the uh, Zyaflex people did a real nice job of using a carrot as a prop 
for showing off Peroni's disease. So animations can really add a lot to your program. But warning, don't get crazy. Don't get carried away with those animations because too much of a good thing is still too much of a good thing. I always say it's kind of like when you're cooking. You know, you put a little bit of salt into the soup and it tastes better. Put too much salt in the soup and you got salty soup. So be very careful. The same thing with animations. A little bit is good. Too much can be too much. So I think from here we can see that this picture is a lady coming into the bathroom, probably OAB from the look on her face. See, you're already starting to build that up in your mind. Um, the way I build these are all done in mid-journey. So I'm creating all these things myself. The uh, um, I build the backgrounds first and add the images to it so I can do different things. Like she looks like she's going in urgently to the bathroom. However, I can put her in the front and make her bigger. Now it's really saying urgency, right? I got to go, got to go. And that's what you want to do. You want the emotional impact while you're talking. You know, a lot of people say that it's information. You can gather information by reading a journal article, going to the website, and looking it up yourself. What you want is something that's going to make you remember it. And that's what a, a presentation is. A presentation is more kind of a combination of entertainment as well as the uh, way of kind of cementing it into our minds, the way we learn. Now, you may have noticed I've been using a lot of these images that look like Pixar images. They're not Pixar's property. Again, these are built in mid-journey. When you use mid-journey, you can say, uh, build it in a certain style. You, I happen to like the, the emotions that you can get on a Pixar style. So I like that. I think it makes it a little lighter and more memorable. So I like to use those. Again, doctor's office, we, we're already kind of clued into that. Do you have to use those? Absolutely not. You can use realistic images. Now, I know in this particular group, everybody here could tell me exactly what this guy is coming to see that doctor for. We know this crowd... And that's the whole thing is without even saying one word, you know that this is going to be a renal colic. I'm going to be talking about kidney stones just from that expression. We've all seen this patient many times in our office. And that's really the key is being able to reproduce something in your office. Uh, I mean, on your presentation of what you want to say so that it cements in your mind. Now, the other thing um, that I want to show here is... Now, this is the challenge for you guys. We're going to actually go into building a presentation live. So I want you to go to the comment box and start putting in what you'd like me to talk about. Pick a subject, kidney stones, impotence, Peroni's disease, BPH, infertility. I, I don't care. Whatever it is, challenge me. I'm not going to take a pre-made slideshow and show it to you. We're going to make the show today. It's going to be interactive. So you guys start putting in what you want to see and... I'm going to bring those up on the screen here shortly, but whenever you're going to build something, you can't just start throwing images all over the place. You need to have a plan and that's your outline. So you need to build an outline. Well, that's probably the hardest thing that most of us struggle with. How do you come up with a good outline of what you're going to talk about? And that's what I'm going to show you is uh, how we can use something like this chat GPT AI to build our outline. Now, let me see what I've got coming up here. I got a question from Nancy. Where are you getting these images? The internet? Um, no, Nancy, you're going to see. We're going to build those. Undesired, undesired fertility. Wow. That's, that's an interesting one. OAB from Susie. Uh, malignant priapism. Wow, you guys are really challenging me here. And uh, go ahead, anybody else out there that wants to throw in a, a possibility? I, I've got three here to choose from. I think I might, I'm, I think I might take the OAB because that might be the easiest one for me to to build. But if I see something else pop up here, undesired fertility of vasectomy consult. Ah, okay, I got what he was referring to. All right, well, very good. So now let me switch over to. Ah, good, that worked. It's always fun when you amaze yourself. So this is ChatGPT, and I'm going to ask it to give me a PowerPoint presentation on overactive bladder. So let's see what ChatGPT comes up with for me. I know this is going by pretty quick, so it's a little hard to 
to read this, but I'm going to show you what we're going to do. So while it's spelling this out, let's go over to our slides. So here's my slideshows. Um, turn that off real quick here. Here's our slideshows. And again, we're doing a, an online presentation. So I'm going to use a dark background with white letters. Now there's options like crazy on PowerPoint and Keynote. All these have all different things. Uh, if you like them, go ahead and use them. But again, you know, I could probably use utilize this one for my presentation. That would work. This one would probably work. Um, this one would work. But hey, you stick with what you like, right? So we want to get our slide up here ready to go. So presentation title. Now, we've already got our title for it. So I'm just going to copy and paste. Overactive bladder, understanding and managing the condition. Simple enough to do. Let's add another slide in here. So now we want to build our, our, our uh, talk. And I'm going to change our view a little bit so I can put my notes down here. So we're going to go back to our first slide, which is welcome introduction, definition of overactive bladder. So let's just take this oops, information right there. Copy that. And we put it down here. So that's our first slide. Now we're going to make our next slide. And it's going to be symptoms. Copy that. We're going to put it down here. Oops. And then we'll get our third slide in here. Now, and again, we can build as many of these slides as we want. I'm just getting a few, so I have a few choices here. All right, good. So now we got welcome to definition of overactive bladder, prevalence of overactive bladder. So remember, I did say um, that I wanted to Go ahead and use as few words as possible. So I'm going to take that out as a title, though. So I'm going to put that up here as a title. So this is how you know it's really live, folks, because I make mistakes. All right. So we have our title up there, overactive bladder. Now, we want to come up with some pictures. So how do we go ahead and get some of those pictures? Well, that's where we go to mid-journey. So I've got a few that I pre-made because mid-journey is not going to be super fast um you can buy faster but let's uh let's start off with the doctor's office so i show you how we created because we'll go ahead and create some stuff in a moment here but i'm going to copy this image and i'm going to put this into our show now if you wanted you could actually make this full size and stretch it from end to end. Whoops. I'm sorry, I'm going to shrink my image down here a little bit so I can see where my corners are. So you can make it a full size image. And to find, to see your title stuff, you just hit that backwards. And that's actually a little bit on our text. So we're going to shrink that a little bit so it fits better. So we got a title for our slide. Now we've got our office here. Now we want to put somebody in who looks like they might be coming in for overactive bladder. Now, probably not the person who was quite so um, distressed, but let's take this picture, for instance, that I came and created earlier. So we copy the image, and I'll show you how we made that image in a moment. And we're going to place that into our office here. Now, with an image file, you see I've got this white background around it. And we don't want that. You can go in here on Keynote, go under the image and say, remove the background. And it'll take the background out for you. I always build on a white background or a black background so that I can get rid of it. And now we've got our first slide built. So overactive bladder, we're going to talk about prevalence. But you kind of get an idea. These women all look like they might be coming in for overactive bladder. Maybe not. But what you're trying to do when you're building these slides is come up with an idea that you can share with the audience of how you're building these. Now, let's see. I'm going to get rid of that. So better screen. All right. So now I want to show you exactly how. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go to the next slide here. 
So symptoms of overactive bladder, frequent urgent urination, nocturia, impact on quality of life. So um, if anybody wants to, uh, oh, I got some questions I'm going to, what site are you using right now? So that site that I'm using right now is called Mid Journey and Discord. Again, episode 32 is going to teach you how to use those programs. This will not tell you how to use them. So this is just using those programs. So I'm building them through Discord. It's Mid Journey. Um, but let's see, we're talking about Nocturia. So let's go over here. Let's build a slide. So as you recall from my previous talk on episode 32, I need to put a prompt in here in order to prompt it to build something. So um, I want to have it build something that looks like a, a bedroom. With someone walking around with a distressed look on their face. Oh, I'm looking for Nocturia, so that, that might work. Um, now, if I want to do it in Pixar style, I put it down in Pixar style. That'll give us a comical look. Um, and AR is aspect ratio. So I want to build it so it fills the whole slide. This is going to be a slide builder. I'm not building a, a background and putting somebody into it, although I could have done that. I'm going to try to do it all in one shot here. And we'll see what happens. So now we see what it does. I will warn you that there is some some drawbacks to Mid Journey in that it won't uh, create a situation where um, if you ask it to create something like bloody or you know surgical, certain words are keywords that it's going to say no, can't can't do that. So be be sure to kind of look at the keywords and things like that that you can't always use. There are some programs out there. Um, there's one I use called, I'll show you, it's called Victizi, that you can get free medical grade type illustrations. Now I was showing you why I said it does take time for it to render. And we are doing this live. So I've got a bedroom scene. Looks like I don't get anybody walking around it. You don't know what you're going to get all the time. Sometimes you have to fine tune it, but that's okay. I'm good with the bedroom. We can always bring somebody in. So again, this is to try to build Nocturia. Um, I want to do one live so you can kind of see how this is done. And then whatever one you like the best, I think this looks like somebody's really bedroom. These look like their kids' bedrooms, somebody older. So then once you find one you like, I'm upscaling the image so that it'll be a uh, better quality. I got it to upscale. There we go. Again, you can see it does take a little bit of time, but not too bad. Once you figure it out, once it builds the first image, upscaling doesn't take too long. Then I copy that and we go, whoops, go back to our slide here and just paste that in. Like that. There we go. So now we want to put somebody in here who looks like they're probably in distress and they need to go to the bathroom. So I built a number of uh, figures here, and I'm going to try to find somebody who looks a little distressed. You can see I built a lot of these things. Almost too many things sometimes. Let's see. I got to have some somebody who looks like a distressed patient. By the way, all these images you're looking at, these are things that I've uh, I've built. Uh, let's take this guy, for instance. Not everything's going to work, but it's worth a try. We'll put him over here. So we know first thing we have to do is get rid of the background. And if you got somebody going the wrong direction, you just flip them. Oops, I got to flip him around. So that he fits, we'll just shrink him up a little bit. Uh, 
And there we go. So now we've got somebody that you might be able to t do a pretty decent talk based on what we see here in this picture on overactive bladder. Nerve problems. I don't like that one. Um, ah, your dynamic testing. We we had some stuff that I talked about for your dynamic testing, and I've got. I know I've got some good pictures that I used from before about your dynamic testing. So we go back into our file of fun here. And I'm gonna just kind of scan back here. Oh, this guy, this, he would have been perfect for the Nocturia, huh? Or this guy, any of these would have been some nice figures for Nocturia. So, yikes. I, I will warn you, if you start doing this, you're going to get addicted to it. So you'll be building images like crazy. This would be another one, could be a nice one for an OAB talk. These are pictures I'm just showing you. You can make them in comic look, too. Guy with crazy hair. But your dynamics, I had something here I know that worked out for. Oh, here we go, for overactive bladder. Perfect. You want something a little comical? We can throw this one into our talk here. Nerve problems, lifestyle factors. Kind of gives you the idea you're rushing to the bathroom. So I think it, uh, whoops, does that, but it's uh, still trying to find my urodynamic stuff that I like. Uh, uh, let's see. I know I had a good picture that I'm thinking of for urodynamics. Well, if you really want to scare people about your dynamics, one of those would be great, right? Okay, so here's here's one that I use in my your dynamics talk. Now, if I'm talking about your dynamics, one of the things I may want to talk about is how you do your dynamics and whether you do it sitting or standing. So this would be a good uh, way of describing sitting and standing. So again, having to say sitting or standing is not going to have the same impact as actually having somebody who's sitting or standing. So let's go up here and let's take a quick peek and look at how this is going to look right now. So here we have our presentation on over black, overactive bladder, understanding and managing the condition. We have our definition of overactive bladder. We're going to talk about overactive bladder. It causes, you know, the bladder can, is contracting on its own sometimes, different things that can cause it. One of the symptoms is nocturia, getting up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. Urgency, you got to rush to the bathroom. And one of the ways we test is by doing a urodynamics test. And the best way to do that test is either sitting or standing, whichever is most natural for this person. So I think you get a pretty good idea from that of how we build those slides. I want to take you through the chat GPT because I think that's important to see what it built up here as, as our slides. An introduction slide, slide two, symptoms of overactive bladder. Now, one thing about ChatGPT is if you know the subject, it's pretty simple to, to, to go ahead and use it because you know what things are accurate and what things would not make sense. It's frequent urgent urination, nocturia, urge incontinence, impact on quality of life, uh, cause and risk factors, muscular issues, nerve product problems, lifestyle factors, age and hormonal changes, other contributing factors, uh, diagnosis of overactive bladder. Again, the uh, uh, medical history evaluation, physical exam, urinalysis, bladder diary, urodynamic testing, other diagnostic procedures. Um, slide five, treatment options, lifestyle modifications, behavioral techniques, fluid management, dietary changes, pelvic floor, medications for overactive bladder. And this is kind of boring if you hear me just reading these off. That's what people do a lot of times when they give a talk. They're just reading the slides, anticholinergic medication. But I just want to show you these slides because I think you can see if you utilize this to build up your slides, you can get a pretty good presentation. Um, coping mechanisms, 
absorbent products, bathroom, emotional support, lifestyle tips for managing OAB, healthy diet and weight management, bladder control strategies, stress management, maintaining a healthy lifestyle, and then even gives you a conclusion of how you should do it and your references. So it's really uh, uh, kind of neat. Now I'm going to go back to a couple of these other ones just to show undesired fertility. So let's see just what it would come up with. So you can see it's giving us our slides, what they should be. By the way, for those of you who are not familiar with ChatGPT, it is a free program. And you can do all sorts of things with it. Um, a lot of the introductions to some of the stuff you'll see on our website, on, my, on euronurse.com, the introduction to each of the programs, I do some of that through ChatGPT. Most recently, I wanted to make shrimp, shrimp scampi, and I didn't have a recipe for it. So I asked uh, ChatGPT to make shrimp scampi. How would I make shrimp, shrimp scampi? And I can tell you, it came out great. And there was another one I saw here. Malignant priapism. I just want to kind of show you that we could have picked any of those. This one's amazingly fast. When it first came out, it wasn't. But they, they've gone through a few iterations, and it, it's just like lightning fast. Midjourney, by the way, just for those that want to know, is not a free program. You have to pay for that one. It, you get it for free, but it's 24 subjects, uh, that, um, 24 things you can make up with it. You'll find out you'll go through that really fast. So I think at this point, I'm going to switch us back over to our expert view. And welcome our panelists back on here. Hey, whoops, sorry, one second here. I just wanted to get over to the questions that were coming in here. So what'd you guys think? Good get, stuff. Get my... All right. Uh, so what, oh, there, there, there are ways to use AI to your advantage, but I think one of the most important things that you need to understand is that you have to provide a good prompt. And Vic, if you don't mind switching me to a full screen, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, sure. Let me get you over here. So if you, if I'm bringing up chat GPT right now, and uh, I, I, I gave a, a different prompt than what Vic gave. And the prompt was create a bulleted list of topics for a presentation slide deck on overactive bladder to show to a group of non-medical people. Be brief, sixth grade language level, 10 slides total. And it generated what you are seeing on the screen now. Slide one, slide two, what is overactive bladder, slide three, common causes, lifestyle changes. And if you want more information, if you want ChatGPT to give you more information, so this is what the bottom of the chat uh, of the chat GPT shows. So it, it, you can you can give ChatGPT further prompts by saying, expand each slide topic with specifics. And then I can click here and it'll automatically generate more information. Yeah. For instance, introduction, welcome, OAB, blah, 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 slide two, blah, blah, blah. And you can use that as a jumping off point when you are creating your slide deck. Back to you. Yeah, absolutely. So, and I think that's that's kind of the point that uh, ChatGPT can do some, I think, the heavy lifting for you. You still have to put the work into it and build it. But uh, as John said, with, with prompts, you can fine tune what you want it to do also. So I do see some questions here. I want to bring in the audience questions too. So will this be available to view later? Absolutely. So all of our programs are always on demand. Uh, you go to euronurse.com and you'll be able to see any of our previous episodes. So this one will be up there after we close out the show. So please do feel free to, to do that. Uh, Nancy says, this has been very helpful and creative. Good. That's actually what I was looking for. Because I think this is a real stumbling stone for people to you know give a presentation is where do you start? How do you get going on it? Um, and yep, John did answer that one. All right. So uh, 
yeah, you know, I think that the the mid journey to me, mid journey is just fun. You can create anything you want, but the biggest thing is, and I've been doing you know talks for ever, and a lot of times what you're doing is you're going to um, different programs and quote unquote borrowing their their pictures. You have to put in you know give them uh, attribution that you're using it, but you don't have to do this if you have a mid journey. Um, license, then you can create your own. They're your product. You can utilize them. It's it's in their license or licensure. Now I can tell you that there's uh, a lot of talk about you know the people who do this for a living that create art. You know people that are real talent, not me, <laughs> that make art, and they're worried about AI replacing their jobs. And I probably you know that's a good thing to worry about. So they are you know considering whether there be some litigation because things could look similar to. I mean, you could say, you know, build something in the style of Picasso and it'll look similar to a Picasso. So it's, it, it is a, a realistic thing, but the question is, will it ever get challenged in court? And it's the concern is it could get challenged in court and they would side and say that, yes, you can't use that stuff. It's copyrighted. It's, it's, it's using copyrighted material. Or they go the other way and say, nope, absolutely not. And that would really put them out of business because people are going to, as these AI things get, more and more powerful. I think they're going to be more and more creative. Uh, see, I did see a couple questions come in to answer John's question. Oh, John had asked if anybody had used ChatGPT, and so we do have some folks out there that have used it. I think it's getting more and more mainstream. People are learning about it, and like I said, I use it for for cooking, <laughs> so it does work out. Andrew, have you seen ChatGPT? Have you seen any of these things before? Lori. I mean, Lori. Sorry. Thanks. <laughs> I think Lori's muted. Lori's muted. Sorry about that. No, I I really appreciate it, Vic. This was good. Um, makes it a lot easier, it seems, for sure. Yeah. Oh, the one thing I did, did want to show everybody, let me see if I can go back to my... Uh computer here whoa that's a weird a weird scene here uh i did want to show you that uh while you're making that transition vic i just want to let the audience know that like what you said earlier you want to be careful not to put too many words on each slide a good presenter will not read off of a slide and good presenter will not have a lot of words on a slide because the human mind can handle one thing at a time you put up a lot of words on a slide the human inclination is to read the, the slide that you have on the screen now the question is do you want the audience to read the slide or do you want the audience to listen to you? There's no, you, you can't make people do two things at the same time. So if you really want to be a good presenter, you want to have a, a slide like Vic said, an image. And that image really is to trigger you, the presenter, to remember what you're going to say next. And not so much, no much, not so much all the all the detailed information. The, the things that we see all the time, it, and that's because it's dogma. Everyone does it the same way. It is so lame. It sucks. You have the, yep. the presentation of the, the actual study on the screen. The, the, the study is like, you know, eight and a half by 11 type of a paper, right? You, you shrink that, you put it on the screen, and then you put whatever words that the presenter has outlined on the side of that image. People are going to try to read the title of that that picture and try to read what the person has outlined on the on the slide it's crazy so why do i even if you're going to make me read all that information why do i need you there yeah. just, just think about that just because everyone has done it the same way does not mean you need to do that be different stand out be memorable and guess what people are going to hire you people are going to pay you thousands of dollars to present ask me how i know <laughs> i know how you know You've been asked. Yep. Uh, it, it, it's definitely the way it works. Um, the downside is, Rick, it takes a lot more work on the presenter's part. You have to rehearse. You have oh, yeah. to practice. And one of, the, one of the best ways to be really, really good at doing this is not mentally practice, but 
physically and literally practice as if you're standing in front of the audience. Think about what you're going to say. And once you master what you're going to say, think about the body language that you're going to use. Think about how you are going to walk the stage. Or if you don't walk the stage, like I don't walk the stage. I want to go down into the audience. I'm among the audience when I present. That is how much I think I, I think it's my topic is important to you. I want to make sure you get it. And that's why I'm in the audience to share what I really believe is important. And if you think your topic is just so-so, stand behind the podium, hide behind the podium, and do like what everyone else does. Yeah. Anyway. And the same I also... Off yeah, go ahead, Maury. Yeah, I also believe that, you know, I've, I've obviously listened to a lot of talks. I haven't done a whole lot of talks, but... The ones that I enjoy the most are the ones, uh, number one, that do have the pictures, but also have stories, whether they're personal or they relate, you know, to what you've been through. L Lori, here's an anecdote. Can you remember when, you know, when I told my story, where I met my wife? Can, would you mind telling us? Oh, oh yeah, okay. it was. You went into a room and you saw her, and there was some conversation or whatever, and that was it. Vic, do you remember where it was? Yeah, OR suite. Right, with a dog okay. picture. Okay, yeah. I, I I mentioned that what thirty minutes ago, and yet you remember. And Lori, to your point, the reason you remember is because I told the story. Stories tend to be sticky. Right, yeah. sticky in our memory. What what does story telling? What does storytelling do? And this is something that I'm trying to get better at. I like to just give the facts, but I don't paint the color. I don't give a lot of emotion in the story, and that's something that I'm actively working to be better at. Stories give you emotion. It it, inv it evokes dopamine, and dopamine will increase focus for the audience, increase connection, increase motivation, and increase retention of that information and the reason humans remember and we love stories that we can't we can't help ourselves but to listen to the stories because it conferred a survival advantage back in the caveman days the the folks who went out and hunted right there's no electricity no internet they came back and they told stories when you sat around the fire at night well, why do you listen to stories? Because these guys, typically men, male, they went out, hunted, gathered, came back. They're survivors. They're survivors. It is to your advantage as the little kids to hear from people who have gone out there, done the, done the deed, survived, and then come back. So it's a survival advantage. We can't help ourselves but listen to stories. And that's why stories are sticky. They evoke dopamine. If you can tell a good story, it, they evoke emotion. It creates that connection with your audience. Yeah. Depends on what you want to do. If you want to just spew information and force that information one way, or if you want to be an interesting, good speaker, it's your choice. Yep. It also works with your patients as well. I Absolutely. mean, I know that our, we, I develop good relationship with patients by telling stories, whether it be personal or, you know, that they're not alone. I, my dad had prostate cancer. You know, he went through this. It, that you can yeah. relate with them so much better. I tell my patients that you know I'm doing. I'm ordering, scheduling a lot of cystoscopies where I look in through the urethra for a lot of guys with PPH. They're scared. You're gonna shove that what into where? No, it's right. So I I tell my patients that I actually did that procedure on my dad not once but twice. And we're still talking. <laughs> I tell these patients that my dad actually suffered urinary retention. He couldn't pee, not once, not twice, but three times requiring the placement of a tube into the bladder. So mm -hmm. those types of stories, they remember. After I operated on them, oh yeah, I remember you telling me about your dad who couldn't pee and he had to have the same procedure. They remember all that. So my question going back to the image that I showed with the title, can any of you remember what that image was? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That wa the warrior guy with the big eyes, kind of sullen face, skinny. Can you tell me the title that was on that slide? Something about artificial intelligence. Yeah. That's all you can remember is artificial intelligence. And it was a whole sentence. I, I purposely picked a long title just for that reason. And, and that's the point. 
I, I like to do my presentations with mostly images because people will remember the image. It'll evoke an emotion. I think that's what you're, and it's kind of the same thing as with the stories. Like you said, the dopamine is emotional. You're, you're getting an attachment to it and that's what makes it work. And creating a story or telling a story that evokes dopamine, oxytocin, that just increases your bond with your audience. If you really believe the topic that you're speaking, you want to create that bond so that they would ingest all that information and be attentive to your presentation, whether that's an hour long, 30 minutes long, or an hour and a half long presentation. I did want to share this website. Um, let me see. It's up there. Here we go. Um, if you want to use medical pictures that are free, which is the, as, as John would always say, he'll take three of them. You know, Vic Teasy, V E C T E E Z Y is the site to use. And you can, the same thing, it, it's not an AI creator like Mid Journey, but it's got stock photos that are, I think, really good to utilize. It's all sorts of things, but I like there's a lot of good medical stuff because you cannot get it to draw, Mid Journey to draw true medical. Um, at this point, I think there's going to be some AI stuff coming out there, but it's not reasonably priced at what I could see so far. But this one's free. So exactly what we always say, if it's free, take three. <laughs> if it's free, it's for me. Yeah. So, all right, great. Uh, let's see. Do we have any questions coming in here? So I do see a question here. Hi, Victor. Thank you so much for this session. I'm working as a creative designer. I also... And also presentation specialist from India. Wow. See, international. I like it. Thanks a lot for your comment. Uh, thank you so much for the session. Oh, I think I got that one. This session is interesting too. So I'm glad that you, you found this useful. And that's, you know, I think we approach a, you know, mostly urology audience, but certainly more than just urology because. I, you know, John and I both like to dabble a lot in technology and I like to share it. So I'm always glad to show what technology can do. And that's something I think this program is uh, going to do. And I, I, I always think that, you know, urology is nice, but there are little areas that we can, whoa, watch my mic, that we can go outside of our world to and also include and public presentation. I mean, that that works for so many industries and really, I think, is something very useful. And I think how to build slides, being able to put on good presentation, huge skill to master. And as John said, it can be profitable too, because when people know who you are and they want you to speak, then you can demand more and more for your efforts. Yeah, so. I know people who are paid a six figure to be delivering a one hour presentation. Oh, absolutely. Uh, my favorite presenter was Steve Jobs for Apple Computer. And he just had a certain cadence about him, a certain, you know, it just looked like it was so unrehearsed, but I know it was, but it's he just highly rehearsed, highly rehearsed. It was just rehearsed. so amazing. And there's a program I was watching and they said one of the things that COVID brought about was more things like this. And they said that you're going to see more and more of these talks from companies going completely video, you know, on online rather than the traditional show, because not only is it rehearsed, but you can go back and do it right. So if you make a mistake, you can always correct it. The live is even going to be replaced by productions. Everything's going to be a production now. Or the best presentations are like what we're doing right now. It's an interactive session. If you have to do it virtually, an interactive session where you bring in the audience, engage the audience, yeah. and, and then present the information. Speaking of Steve Jobs, I actually read a book called The Presentation Secrets of Steve Jobs. And I took a page out of that Presentation Secrets book. And in my first 10 slides, I have fewer than 40 words. First 10 slides, fewer than 40 words. Force yourself to do that. It'll definitely make you a better presenter because it will force you to rehearse. You have yep. to tell stories. You have to remember what you're saying. And pay, the, uh, the audience will be paying attention to you and not paying attention to the slide with a bunch of words on it. Yeah. Again, human brain is is a single processing type of a setup. You can, you think that you're multi-processing, you're not doing multi-processing. Single processing. Yeah. I I, I kind of took my uh, technique from watching enough presentations that I hated. And I said, here's what I'm not going to do. 
this this is just not the way to do it. And you know, a lot of words, bullet points, all that stuff. I just couldn't stand it. Now I, I, we're in a field where you have to have a certain amount of words in there because there's you know maybe a you're trying to say what the the flow rate is for a euro flow. You know, the normal you got to have the numbers up there for people to be able to write this stuff down. But the story has to tell the the presentation, not the the numbers and the letters and the words. So, well, great. This has been a great show. I'm going to wrap it up because we're getting close to our 10 o'clock hour. Um, I do have an uh, announcement for next week. I mentioned that we are going to look at other things besides just straight urology nursing. So next week, we're going to have a hospice nurse coming in. A uh, guy I know really well, Frank Sinise, who happens to be my younger brother, is a hospice nurse. Uh, there's a lot of urology that goes into hospice nursing, but I think there's a lot of misunderstanding in what hospice nursing provides, what they do. I think it'll be a great opportunity to, to ask him questions about what they do. It's really, uh, he really loves what he's doing and it's a great profession. Great also, topic. save the date, July 29th is going to be our one year anniversary. It's going to be our 52nd episode. We're going to be having a live raffle. You got to be live in order to be part of the show and win a raffle prize. But Suna has been generous enough to give us a one year membership. That's a $95 value to give away at the raffle. And I'm going to be raffling off a couple of t-shirts. So if you want to win something, be sure to tune in live. It's the only way you're going to be able to enter. Now you don't have to be on StreamYard to do it. It can come in through Facebook or YouTube or LinkedIn, but you got to be live. And I'm also going to be having an announcement of something that's coming new to Euronurse. I, I think you're really going to like, we'll announce it on our one year anniversary should be up and running. It's getting close. If you want more, you can always join us at the after party. Just click that after party. Go to Euronurse.com. Click the link that says after party. It'll transport you into this show. We won't be on the air for that, but you can be uh, able to ask us any additional questions that you might have. As always, I hope you had a great episode here. Hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>